Bonjour, salut, je m'appelle Nelson Everhart. Uh, no, 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 not going to do that. It has been a hot minute since I've done one of these. This is actually the reason uh, for the delay was this track and about four others I just did for King's Isle for Wizard 101. For the new expansion to Wizard City, this plays over an area of the level known as the Elsewhere. It's kind of a combat, combat-y track. The note was this is a strange environment with kaleidoscopic skies and sits at the edge of reality. You know, that old chestnut. They don't give me a whole lot of background information as to, you know, what's coming up or, you know, what might be sort of the undercurrents any more than I need uh, to, to write the track. Um, they did send some screenshots and I looked at it and that's kind of what I went from the sort of back and forth between epic good and evil and you know how I do. Uh, I actually knew beforehand that I was going to be giving these tracks to King's Isle and they might do some remixing with them for this level. Uh, I started putting the chords up at the top of the sessions to try and help uh, my buddy Mark uh, sort through what was going on at any given time. But hopefully these might be interesting to you as well. So without further ado, this is the Elsewhere from the new Catacombs expansion. And there is the loop. Okay, so a very big session. I actually had to restart it a couple times as the RAM load on my computer, trying to keep all these samples in memory and trigger them on some of my bigger chords and bigger sections. And the effort of trying to do the screen recording at the same time is bringing my computer to his knees. Old Bessie needs a upgrade, if you know what I'm saying. But to be fair, it is a rather large uh, session with a lot of doubles and triples and quadruples making it sound bigger. What we've got with the harp is kind of leading everything here. That's sort of setting up our... A lot of, a lot of push and pull in there. That's okay because even throughout the kind of string parts, this is my uh, sort of typical spiccato string sound. And then I have a really nice patch from 8DO. Uh, this is uh, violins. It's called Adagio uh, violins. And it's got a lot of really nice short stuff that I like to layer on top of my usual uh, Sam Symphobia stuff down here. There's my short notes. So I got a lot of that. And then I also wanted to add a little bit of the uh, winds in there as well. To me, this is very matrixy. 
kind of two different layers playing on top and they're doing something similar but it's just different enough to kind of just make it swirl to me those kaleidoscope swirls in the sky is what inspired this i do have some low i've tried to be careful in wizard 101 not to put too much synth stuff in it and that's just to keep keep myself in check or else it you know could easily turn into <laughs> to edm when i get going early on we just kind of decided that wasn't the voice of wizard 101 now in chrysalis specifically and a little bit uh in imperia we started pulling in some more of the uh, electronic elements just because first of all it needed diversification from the rest of the world we wanted to differentiate it but also it was thematically appropriate you know chrysalis is bugs and creepy kind of horror genre writing and imperia is a little more futurist writing so we wanted to allow some different tonalities through there so i pulled in this uh, pulse base a library called gravity uh it, it's a little bit more RAM heavy, so I wound up having to convert it to audio. Uh, especially in this lead up section. I know I wanted this giant splash to be, you know, gigantic. So it has a lot of different layers in it. There's that general brass sound, there's the bones sound, but it needed that low synth part to really just hold down the fort. So this is my trick on a lot of pieces. I have kind of a generic sound that sounds pretty good. And I, I really do like this brass patch and use it a lot. Uh, it doesn't kill for some of the higher sparkly stuff. So I have like the trumpet part coming in. And then I have some of the really mid-rangey horns. I have two patches I'm using from Cine Samples, uh, Cine Brass Library. Each of these does something uh, different. There's a there's two horns playing together, and then there's six horns playing together, obviously, from the track names. Well, check it out. Here's the two horns. It's got that nice, really mid-rangey sound. These ones just sound so good masked. and they burn a little harder uh, on the top velocities. And then I wanted to bring some more tuba in. I've talked in these videos a lot how I love writing for tuba. I figured why not? Again, really, really holding down the fort. So you have to be careful with, you know, how much of it you use, but it is a part of that kind of big epic fullness. I wanted to use the harp, I wanted to use the celeste, uh, because we did that a lot in uh, City originally. I'm going to bring back you know, some of that vibe. There's definitely a uh, darker kind of presentation to him here. I also have this ATO. This patch is called Mega Horns with a Z. So you know it's serious. So just a nice big fat horn sound. You know, it's the it's the horn of an alien ship here to, you know, just destroy us as a culture. Uh, I've got some other kind of end of the world elements. This choir patch doing, the sound is actually called Vertigo. And so it's a really dizzy kind of uh, cluster. And I took that and just did a really huge ramp up for this section. Gets louder at the end. A uh, little pitch at the end there too. And then another uh, riser. Risers are used in tr like movie trailers all the time. And since this is kind of a movie trailer section of the track. And it's really just happening over the uh, strings, just kind of playing this repeated note pattern. And we're just building up to the next section. So that to me was the fun part, uh, just having that dope, 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 dope. Do, do, kind of building up in the bass. This is probably impossible, <laughs> but this is the prerogative of the uh, electronic 
orchestral composer these days. I have these, you know, big, thick uh, brass chords going on. And then I'm also doing these little brass shots underneath it. In any case, I think it sounds, sounds really good. The tuba and the uh, low staccato brass. <laughs> Also brought the xylophone in. Sometimes when you get all these layers in uh, and you get to these busy parts where there's, you know, the strings are doing some faster work here, the, the definition kind of gets lost. A lot of samples of larger groups, you've got a lot of players on uh, each part. And so the exact start of the note gets a little blurred as each person plays it slightly differently. To put some of that back in, I pulled uh, the xylophone in, which is not something I've, I, I don't use that instrument a whole lot uh, in my writing, this is marimba. Uh, it started out as a marimba sound, it changed it to xylophone. It, it definitely adds the attack that this part needs. Fun part, I got a couple uh, percussion instruments in here. Uh, this war drum and torture drum tracks. They're also from Cine Samples. This is an older library, but it sounds great. It's called Drums of War. If you like a lot of the Lord of the Rings soundtrack and all the big, heavy, epic percussion, just, you know, a giant tree that was hollowed out and some unidentified giant pack animal was skinned to, to be the head of it. Those are kind of the drums that it, it specializes in. War Ensemble. Uh, ancient torture drum, you know, just brutal, brutal, brutal drum stuff. And they give you just enough control over here. This is boom, body, and head. So it's like the lower uh, frequencies, you know, the, the, the sub bass frequencies. Body is more kind of the low mids, and the head is like the attack. Uh, I've also got this patch here, uh, Tycho Ensemble from 8DO Productions. I These are really good. They go behind action cues really well. Tycho's as an instrument really cut through the mix and just kind of provide a lot of, there's a lot of dynamics to them too. It's like they can be soft and rumbly in the background or they can be kind of more in your face. There's the Tycho's in there. You really hear most of them when they kind of do the little interstitial duck it dun uh, rhythms because the the war drums kind of doing most of the heavy lifting there, and then those tycos are just kind of popping in. They're just adding. They add a lot of like emphasis, a lot of momentum to parts that other other instruments are are shining on, but you know they they really just kind of sneak in. There's the snare. Um, some people do uh, will program a part like this and then just kind of copy paste it. I like to play it all the way through. Uh, first of all, it's more fun, but it's also it gives you a little more diversity in the velocity just so it sounds more real. And it also, you know, every once in a while you just feel like doing something and you do it. And that's very much a drummer's uh, prerogative. If they feel like, you know, something needs a little boost or another little, you know, emphasis in it, they kind of throw that in. And that's what you simulate when you play along for that whole section. Well, that is dark. A couple of the tracks that you hear earlier in the catacombs use a lot of low instruments. I used the tuba, I used bassoon and contrabassoon and a bass clarinet. I love the bass clarinet and I never really felt like I got to use it a whole lot. It doesn't speak very well by itself, uh, so it's easy to, for it to get covered up by other things, but it's a, it's a beautiful tone. And right there I got that uh, doubled up with the tuba. It's kind of this little uh, pattern gets passed around from instrument to instrument. There in the bassoons and then bass clarinet and tuba, the horns come in.
So there I I simplified this the string line and I kind of simplified that a little bit and then all these different instruments could play it and then I could throw this melody around those different instruments everybody can play the game and then it that same pattern is moving in here, right? Something else that's working here is this uh, section of 5 8 going into 6 8. Uh, technically, you could call that 11 8. So the count's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. I saw a comment where somebody uh, specifically said this sounds like it could be from Imperia, and I agree, especially with this melody here. This to me is kind of, it's sort of Star Trek-y, maybe more like, you know, the uh, later themes. After we kind of cruised through this section, I felt like we needed to kind of broaden it out a little bit more, see kind of the big picture. Yeah, the seven is, the seven's odd. the time signature there made me kind of explore that and do something that didn't feel 100% natural. It's not, you know, the I, I think the idea you're looking for is not always the one that that's just easy to play. Sometimes kind of challenging your brain and doing something you wouldn't normally do is what you need to kind of get out of the, the comfort zone and, and do something a little bit uh, more exploratory. And what's more exploratory than kaleidoscopic skies? All right, hopefully that explains uh, what I've been up to for the last little while and why the delay was so long. Sorry about that. Uh, traditional promises to, you know, try and be better about that in the future. But in all honesty, I can, I get to these when I can get to them and I'll try and keep cranking them out. Let me know in the comments if, uh, if this is something interesting to you, or we want to kind of return back to looking at the, the older stuff, which I am going to do, but just want to know how to prioritize it. Thank you. See you later.